May I ask for your assistance? That's a question I can answer. Bloodied bandages. Has someone been hurt? Where would a champion hide a key? I hope Paul is more skilled at yachting than he is at hiding keys. The champion's whirlpool. Pool's bread and butter. A foghorn to navigate and warn others at sea. You should have a warning to cover your ears. Sails of hatred. I suppose there is something for everyone, including champions. Who knew archaeology could be so exciting? Exciting is certainly a word. Bloodied bandages. <laughs> to earn big, you have to spend big. Additional earnings to sweeten the victory. An interesting place for a message to a champion. Old betting slips. Paul always bets on Whirlpool. One victory after another. <laughs> Mr. Gildon wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Expensive set of tools for woodwork. An amateur wouldn't know how to use these. A box full of darts. Each has a needle and can be loaded with drugs. Shipbuilding, shipwrights tricks, sail weaving. Tea tin. Undeniably psychotropes. Not for toothache, I think. I wonder what he has for biscuits. 
Oi, hands off my possessions before you lose your fingers. Are you illiterate? The rules are written everywhere. Ah, uh, Mr. Perks, the cabin boy himself. Champion, you mean. I was right. You are illiterate. I think a couple of shiners might teach you. One last chance. Who are you? I'm Sherlock Holmes, a friend of our mutual acquaintance, Miss Imogen. Look, you artichoke. Imogen has no friends. Except for me. If you must try to insult people, it's better to know the meanings of the words that you're using. You fancy you could teach a sailor to swear? Go ahead. Show me how inventive you are. Stand still for a moment. So, a woman wishes to become a real criminal, and smuggling is a stepping stone towards that? Is there not enough prestige in yachting? Or, is it easier to compete with other fools like yourself? Everyone has a starting pistol, just shoot and run. Don't say a word. I don't know where you're getting half of this nonsense, but you're on some thin ice here that I'm willing to crack. Damn you, Paul. I'm sick of... Who's this peacock? Does he know who I am? I definitely know who you are not. You're not a dictionary reader, at least. I wanted to see how you... pals interact with each other in your natural habitat. But I'm afraid I have to interfere. No more crime. I'm coming for you. Don't cry, you the snuff's ready. <laughs> Time to knock this guy out. I couldn't miss the party. <laughs> oh. Take a rest, my friend. Give him the pepper snuff. <laughs> we can overcome the brute now. Too simple. I couldn't miss the party. I couldn't miss the party. You're dead. 
I'm coming. <laughs> Don't cry. Give him the pepper snuff. I couldn't miss the party. Symbol. And there's no reward for risking our lives. Paul's explanation will suffice. Your fellow mariners have a strange way of showing hospitality. They were not my friends. Are you sure? I would rather risk my neck for someone who's at least honest and thankful. Perhaps then don't enter someone's life and be so judgmental, pretending you're better than they are. Then give me your perspective and allow me to see through your eyes. I tried to tell you before, but your partners interrupted. Have you heard the news? Theodore Gilden is dead. Do you have anything to say? Well... What a shock. To me, he was an angry old ogre. Good riddance. Was it Goliath that killed him? Did it crush him? Break his bones? Come on, tell me. I want all the details. You have an unusual way of showing grief. Imogen wouldn't appreciate that. But yes, the animal could have been involved. It's poetic in a way, isn't it? It takes a beast to kill a monster. I wish I could have been that elephant. What were you doing this morning, Miss Perks? Don't call me that. I'm a champion. I was sailing. The other club members told me that you missed the race this morning. Do champions not need to practice? Ugh, you've talked with them already. No, I wasn't racing. I visited the doctor after that attack on me. And then I had to honor the deal with the bandits you just took care of. You're asking for trouble with this smuggling business. You'd better leave it before they smuggle you out in a barrel. Don't patronize me. I've only ever had trouble with law-abiding citizens like Gilden and you. Never bandits. So ask me anything you want, and then get out of my sight. I don't know what you're suggesting. I don't know what you're suggesting. You smuggle illicit psychotropes on your yacht. Not a delivery for the hospital, I'm sure. Of course not. I've had to cut corners to earn some money. How might a person afford to pay for a yacht in an honest way? I don't know, although I'm smart. The buyers are my customers. Adults who are willing to pay for their pleasure, or weapons for jewels. Whatever they want me to deliver. Nothing criminal. Well, it's your lucky day. I'm not here because of smuggling. Have you tasted this tea yourself? I wouldn't have been a champion if I had used it. It's just a side business that keeps my career afloat. It's quite expensive to compete in yachting. Sometimes I cut corners. Such as fixing Whirlpool yourself? Exactly. And sometimes I just have to pay. That's how I earn money. I don't sell slaves or take the last mangir from a poor family. Look what I found. A box full of darts. Hey, that's mine. I confiscated it. These darts appear to be filled with something. Poison? How powerful is it? It's strychnine. Enough to instantly kill a small rodent. I haven't tried it on a human. Yet. I hope you know what you're doing. Could it immobilize a larger animal? Say, hmm, an elephant? I've never tried. But I have wondered. It seems as though Theodore Gilden hung a sword of Damocles over your life and career. Were these only words, or something more serious? Check my forearm. Pulled muscles and bruises. Small cuts. Nothing that you could call serious. I doubt that a man in his late fifties could wrestle you. It wasn't him. He behaved like a rat and hired brutes. His boys tried to lock my hands behind my back, but I was faster and I escaped. Was he so protective of his daughter, or was it your feminine secret that provoked him? My guess is that he was protecting his property. As he saw it, he owned Imogen. And he treated her like a piece of furniture. 
He didn't want his daughter to be loved by anyone. What's more painful is that Theodore didn't allow me to love his daughter. Typical. I'm not sure that your relationship with Imogen could be described as typical. Are you afraid of a woman in trousers? Now that's typical of men. A charming picture. I've heard that champions do often pose with their trophies. Cheeky. It is a lovely trophy, though. I'm sure you will agree. What is it that you like most about her? Her naivety? Her father's money? A somewhat difficult choice. Especially now that her father is out of the equation. Between yachts, darts, and notes from bandits, I've discovered many fascinating facts about you. But this... An installment of Nabe and Laura's adventures. Why did you sully your library with this? It's... a gift from Imogen. I didn't buy it. I might have turned a couple of pages, but nothing more. I swear. I will give you the benefit of the doubt, but your literary taste has put you on my blacklist. Does this knife seem familiar? I didn't find it in your competitor's back, to be clear. This knife is as blunt as your humor. It's a boson's knife, but it's not mine. I wouldn't be so careless as to mislay my tools. Imogen doesn't strike me as an industrious young lady, so I find it strange that she was busy packing up all her belongings when Mr. Gildon died. That's some um, favorable wind in your sails, isn't it? Is it so suspicious that a couple might embark on a trip? I wanted to thank her, so we planned to go traveling. A Theodore-free place, without elephants. The timing of it is suspicious, however. Your lady friend becomes an orphan and heir, and there's a planned trip directly afterwards. An improvised romantic dinner will never please a spoilt girl. A planned voyage might. It's not spur of the moment. I don't know what you're suggesting. I don't know what you're suggesting. I'm clueless. I'm clueless. A. Swift, are you familiar with this name? The gentleman had business with Mr. Gildon. Likely just another strange and wrinkled fellow like old Gildon was. Perhaps this swift person has a rhino, and they wanted to see which pet was stronger. In other words, I don't know who he is, but I bet he's crazy like Theodore. I doubt that Cortona has ever boasted a battle arena for that size of mammal. You have an interesting imagination. What can you tell me about the elephant? He's smarter than some people here, including his owner. Although I feel he could be dangerous, no matter how much he's fed. Why is that? Have you ever seen Goliath attack anyone? Well, not exactly. But I saw it, uh, abusing some poor tree during one of its walks with Theodore. The expression on that old ninny's face was priceless. But it wasn't funny to look at. Believe me. It was frightening.
Extra, extra! Dylan is even putting up posters. Exquisite furniture for you. He has even been put up. Take a look. Try it on. Remotely familiar to you. Should it? Concentrate, Sherry. Are you lost, sir? Not at all. I'm right where I need to be. I'm Sherlock Holmes, by the way. Ursula Oni, the chief archivist. How can I help you exactly? I need to take a look at the history of Cordona and its islanders to retrieve some, hopefully, useful information. Your brother Mycroft told me that you were direct, and now that we've met, I can see that is true. Someone in our family has to balance the evasive nature of my brother. Well, may I use the city archives? You may, of course. But in return, perhaps dinner? That's a high price to pay for looking at your archives. <laughs> I was teasing you. Pay no attention to me. Are you able to help me? Apologies, sir, but I've never heard of it. With your love for archives, you would have made the perfect bureaucrat. 